Good evening, everybody, and welcome once again to the video sports page. I'm your host, Carl Pratt. Tonight, I welcome you to edition number 1142 in our first program for 2013. Hardly seems like it, but we first went on the air back April 4th, 1989. Lots of shows for your viewing pleasure over the years, lots of highlights. And you know what? Tonight, well, it'll be pretty much the same old thing with the video sports page. During this week's edition of our program, I'll share with you some highlights of the Plymouth South Varsity hockey game that took place on Wednesday as the Panthers took on a very good Falmouth team. Meanwhile, I'll show you some highlights of Plymouth South basketball. This team off to a great start under the direction of Coach Costa. The Plymouth South Panthers boys basketball team was in action on Wednesday in a non-league matchup against Bishop Stang. Over at Silver Lake, the Lakers took on Hanover in high school hockey, and the Lakers are off to a great start. We have just a few seconds of highlights to share with you. We get over there just a bit too late, but we had an opportunity to spend some time with Coach Brendan Hall, and he talked about his program, and he's full of smiles these days. Following that Silver Lake matchup against Hanover at the Harbormark Rink, the Pembroke team was in action. The Titans took on the Quincy Presidents, and good news to report for Pembroke, who's off to a rather slow start this winter, but they had an impressive performance on Wednesday night. But right off the top, before we get into any sort of action, let's talk a little bit, if we can, about some outstanding efforts these days concerning the Duxbury Girls Basketball Program. All right, the Duxbury girls so far this season, a 4-1 and one on the campaign following an impressive victory on Wednesday night, their first in league play. But so far this season, they're 4-1 and one overall, 1-0 one and oh in league action, 3-0 and oh at home. And here's some interesting numbers. The Duxbury girls basketball team averaging 52 points a ball game. That's pretty good for girls basketball. And they're giving up just 33, so some stingy defense. Nearly a 20-point difference on the season. The Plymouth North Eagles, well, so far this season, under the direction of Dennis Azevedo, they've got an interesting record, three wins and two losses, but they're 3-0 and at home so far this year. They haven't played a league matchup yet in the Atlantic Coast League, but they'll jump back into action later on this week. All right, the Plymouth North Eagles lose a tough one to North Quincy on Wednesday. That was the team they won against to open up the 2012-2013 season. And as far as Atlanta Coast League basketball is concerned, Summer Ivan's team down at Plymouth South, well, those girls are 4-2 and two overall, 2-0 two and oh in Atlanta Coast League action. They're the only team in the Atlanta Coast League that has had two league games. And you know what? So far this season, they're averaging 47 points and giving up 44. Well, our first bit of highlights we can share with you tonight come from the Armstrong Rink on Wednesday night. That's where the Plymouth South hockey team was in action. And Plymouth South loses a tough one to a good Falmouth team. And over the Plymouth South Panthers, Plymouth South loses a tough one there. And they drop to 5-2 uh, and two on the season. Falmouth with the victory goes to 3-1-3 three, and three on the campaign. Let's pick up some of the highlights from Wednesday night.
Well, following that Plymouth South matchup against Falmouth, the Plymouth North Eagles were in action. They went up against Dennis Yarmouth, and you know this season it's been kind of an interesting campaign so far for Coach Tony Rhoda's team, the Plymouth North Eagles. They've had games where they've ended up in a 5-5 tie, an 8-8 tie. Well, if they could have reached either of those scores, they would have won a game against D.Y. Unfortunately, it was Ryan Furtado, a freshman, who got the game's only goal for Plymouth North, and it was a 1-0 lead going into the third period, but that's where D.Y. scored twice and eked out a 2-1 victory against Plymouth North. Both teams will be back in action on Saturday night. Now over at the Harbor Mark rink, the Silver Lake Lakers were in action against Hanover. Silver Lake off to a very good start here this winter. Picked up another impressive victory, Silver Lake scoring a win against the Hanover Indians for their fifth victory of the season. And they got a terrific performance in the nets from sophomore Alex Crone. He made a bunch of saves and kept Silver Lake in this game throughout. And then the offense took over. Silver Lake exploded in the third period to score this impressive victory. Matt Koch, Connor Smith, and Joe Lochran as the number one line for Silver Lake, and they had a terrific performance once again leading the way for the Lakers. A lot of depth on this team, and you know, Silver Lake also got some very good play from Kyle Hoxie. Kyle's only a junior, but he's all over the ice. He knows how to play the puck. He knows how to play the boards. He knows how to ward off the opponent and certainly cause all sorts of fits for the uh, visiting Hanover Indians, Kyle Hoxie, and you'll see him in our picture wearing number 22. Well, I only got a handful of highlights remaining here for Silver Lake. I got there kind of late because you can't be in both ranks at one time in different spots. Well, we do have a handful of highlights to show you. Then I'll replay the interview I had with Silver Lake head coach Brendan Hall. <laughs> Okay, we caught the tail end of the Silver Lake matchup tonight here at the Harbomock Rink as they took on Hanover. Silver Lake off to a terrific start tonight. I'm pleased to be joined by their head coach, Brandon Hall, and you got to be pleased, a good performance tonight. Yeah, definitely. Our kids played real well. Uh, it was a 1-1 game going into the third period, and um, really stepped up, got four goals in the third period. Um, couldn't ask for anything more. Boys, boys skated real hard. Three full solid lines. Let's talk about it though, scoring that many goals in the third period. What you say between periods two and three or did the kids just take it upon themselves? Well, we got a real deep team as far as seniors go. Uh, we got 10 seniors on the team. That makes a big difference. They know what they have to do. Uh, we go into the room, we make adjustments. We got a coach up in the stands that sees things. Um, you know, we talk some things out before we go into the room, let the kids know what we're seeing, uh, and then they make adjustments on the ice, and they've been great about that. There's a lot of kids that have played well that have helped you get off to such a great start. Talk about your young goalie because it's a kid that started this year with no experience. Yeah, he was a, he's a sophomore, Alex Crone. Uh, he started the season. Um, we had a you know we had a goalie battle at the beginning of training camp. We had uh, three scrimmages. All goalies got a shot. Uh, he came out a little ahead, and um, he's really taken off. I think his uh, before this game his goals against average was 1-4. I mean you can't ask for anything more than that. 
And what's it do for a young kid with each game as he gets more and more confident, he notices victories, his teams are behind him? Yeah, and you know what? The kid's a gamer. Um, he doesn't put up with anything in the net. He gets guys skating by. He doesn't mind taking a hack at somebody. Uh, he plays the game smart. He knows, knows the ins and outs of the position. Uh, he plays like a senior. Uh, you obviously have a deep team, as you mentioned, but it starts with that first line. They're scoring their fair share of goals. Yeah, uh, uh, Coke and Locker and, and Connor Smith, uh, the three of them have been outstanding. Uh, Connor and Joe uh, have played for th for four years on the varsity team, and Matt Coke has been a three-year varsity player for us, uh, and, and those guys just play so well together. Obviously, last year is a year you want to put behind you. You got off to a good start, and things didn't go so well the rest of the way. How about this year? Do you feel a bit different with this team? Do the kids feel it different? Yeah, you know, it, a lot of it has to do with the veteran leadership that we have. We got kids that have been playing for three years now on the varsity team. We've had kids playing for four years on the varsity team. They know what it, they know what to do. Uh, as sophomores, they got a taste of it in the tournament, uh, and they want to get back there. Right, let's talk about it for you personally, off to a good start like this. What's it make you feel like? You're not in the car yet, but when you get in the car in 10 or 15 minutes yeah. and you're driving home, and what's going to bring the biggest smile to you after this game? Uh, you know, the fact that we had a 10-day layoff. Uh, we didn't play. We haven't played a game since uh, December 22nd, um, and I had a feeling we were going to come out a little flat, and we did. You know, we took four penalties in the first period, and it didn't. Or three penalties in the first period didn't help us. Um, but the fact that we battled back, these kids battle. Uh, there's no, you know, there's no giving up with this group. All right, Silver Lake Lakers tonight with a nice victory here at home against Hanover at the Hobbamock Rink. That puts you now at what on the season? We're five and one on the season. Five though. and yeah. one. Does that surprise you? What does five and one mean to you? If I told you and talked to you back right after Thanksgiving yep. and said you started your practice and said you're going to get off to a five and one start. Halfway to the tournament. There you go. Yeah. All right, listen, before I let you sneak away, talk about the upcoming schedule. Are there any games that, in a coach's mind, you circle and say, okay, we're five and one, but? Yeah, I hate to say the cliche, but the next game. Uh, we go Whitman Hanson next, uh, and, you know, it's a rival game for us. We get these kids play Whitman Hanson Kingston Youth Hockey. These guys grow up playing together. They, they want to beat their buddies on Saturday. Well, that's a little more special, don't yeah. you think? Yeah. It's not just Whitman Hanson, like yeah. you said. It's the combination yep. of the two towns yep. making up a youth hockey yep. program. That's kind of unique. Yeah, oh, it certainly is. Uh, you know, a lot of towns have their own program. But to have the two schools really combine growing up, and, you know, these kids all played together all fall, and now they're playing against each other. Yes, well, listen, we appreciate your time. Congratulations on the win tonight Thank you. and the great start. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. You bet. Brandon Hall, the head coach of the Silver Lake Varsity Hockey Team, joining us this week on the video sports page. We'll continue with more, so stay with us. Hi, I'm Marv Albert. I hope you're enjoying tonight's edition of the video sports page with Carl Pratt. All right, while we're on the subject of boys hockey, let's talk about the Duxbury program. Duxbury wipes out Whitman Hanson on Wednesday. Final score there was 9-0. Duxbury on the season now, 4-1-2. Nick Morocco scored two goals to help lead the Green Dragons to that impressive victory. And speaking of Duxbury hockey, let's talk about the girls program because on Wednesday over at the Bog in Kingston, Duxbury took on Hingham. Now this is a matchup of two of the outstanding programs, not only on the South Shore, but throughout the state. The Duxbury girls hockey program under the direction of Friend Weiler and visiting Hingham. Hingham, one of the top teams in the state as well. Hingham in Division II, Duxbury in Division I. Well, Duxbury wins this go around 4 to 2 to improve to 5 and 0 on the season. And on Wednesday night it was senior Hannah Murphy who had a hat trick leading uh, the Duxbury Green Dragons. In fact, her three goals made it 3 nothing in favor of Duxbury. They held on for that 4 to 2 victory. Duxbury, by the way, knocked off undefeated or previously undefeated Hingham in that game. Duxbury will take its 5-0 record to the bog once again this coming Saturday as Duxbury will take on Falmouth. Faceoff is set for 530. Well, we're on the subject of hockey, so let's stay right with it if we can for a few more minutes. Let's talk about the Pembroke Titans. Pembroke 5, Quincy nothing on Wednesday night. Jackson Wainwright. He's a young goalie. He came up with 28 saves to help lead Pembroke to that victory against Quincy at the Harbour Mark Rink. While we've got an opportunity, let's show you some of the highlights of Pembroke's victory against Quincy. <laughs>
Lyndon Byers here at Celtics Media Day. Yes, former Bruin doing media, covering the Celtics. But you know what? As much fun as I've had walking in the same building as KG, Paul Pierce, Rondo and the company, there's nobody that covers sports in this area better than, than Carl Pratt and Cap Sports. Okay, let's take this opportunity to talk a little bit about the outstanding wrestling program down at Plymouth South. After a year off, Mark Larangeau is back directing the Plymouth South program. His team so far 10-0 on the season. And as we tape this show and as we show you our program on a Thursday night, the Plymouth South Panthers going up against Sandwich with that undefeated record. Most recently... It was Plymouth South involved in the outstanding Marshfield tournament that attracts some very good high school wrestling programs throughout the state. Recently, 34 teams were in action. Plymouth South came in second, failing to only the only team they couldn't overtake was North Attleboro. In that particular tournament, Plymouth had 14 kids wrestle and 13 out of the 14 won at least one match. They had four wrestlers that made it to the finals. Colin Hardy was the only one to actually come away with a championship as he won it in the 126-pound class as he went 4-0 in the tournament. But they did have some outstanding wrestling from Dylan Finley, Ryan Hardy, and Sean Duncan. Those three all made it to the finals of the Marshfield tournament. So Mark Lorange's team 10-0. By the time you see this program, they could be 11-0 as they go up against Sandwich. And you know what? So far this season, take a load of some of these numbers. Plymouth South has defeated BC High 54-9. They defeated Silver Lake 66-5. And they defeated Cambridge, Ringe, and Latin by a count of 51-9. You talk about depth, you talk about impressive efforts. Plymouth South putting it all on the mats this winter. Well, while we're on the subject of Plymouth South, let's talk about the basketball team. It had its hands full on Wednesday night for a good portion of the game, but they came on strong late and actually ended up edging out visiting Bishop Stang 55-53. to We have some highlights to share with you, and what we can tell you is by the time we left the place, Plymouth South was trailing, giving up a bunch of three-point buckets. They were down by as many as nine points, but they ended up eking out the victory against Bishop Stang. In this one, Mike Mealy had 17 points, and they all came in the second half. And with that victory, Plymouth South is now 4-1 and one on the season. Let's take a look back now at some of those highlights.
One other quick note as far as some high school basketball is concerned. The Carver Crusaders came up with a nice victory against Norwell. The Carver Crusaders knocking off Norwell 71-59 to on Wednesday night. Tony Pires had 23 points so far on the season. Pires is averaging 28 points a ball game. The Carver Crusaders knocking off Norwell, not just because of Pires, because he was one of four players in double figures for head coach Roger King. Carver is now 2-2 two and two on the season. And the Silver Lake Lakers struggling a bit on the girls' side. They can lose a tough one against Marshfield on Wednesday night, but they'll be back in action on Friday. All right, that'll take care of this week's edition of the Video Sports Page. I've been your host, Carl Pratt. Health and wisdom from the Video Sports Page. You know, you never know who you'll run into in the ballpark. Hi, everybody. I'm Mike Lynch. Hi, I'm Bob Lobel. What? You got a job. <laughs> I finally got hired, huh? Congratulations. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. Hey, you know what? Uh, when I'm not watching you on Channel 4, which is very rare, by the way. You know, it's the same way I feel about you. When I'm not watching you on Channel 5, which is... It's even rare, it must be. <laughs> really. Well, you know what? I'm always watching Carl Pratt on uh, Cap Sports. So am I. Yeah. You know, I've gotten uh, some uh, some video from him, from a high five and some other athletes. I thought he was working for us. <laughs> he I get all the stuff, me, the high five no, stuff on the Plymouth me, area. No, he told me the stuff that I get from him is exclusive. You're telling me he gets your stuff? You give him? He gives you stuff? Well, I'm not going to watch him anymore. No, That's not true. Right, 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 we right, always right, watch right, it. Right, we, we all right, so when I don't watch Sports Final, when I don't watch Channel 4 and Bob Lobel, I don't I'm watch, watch All Access or Channel 5 <laughs> and Mike Lynch. I'm watching Carl Pratt. Pratt.